Federal budgets are important to government jobs because it impacts hiring. It can also impact training. So an agency that has a larger budget, they could be willing to negotiate on your step level. There can be more job creation within that agency. For example, look at the VA, that's a large agency. VA versus GSA. There are thousands of jobs available in the VA. In the GSA, there are hundreds. Different size agencies, different budgets matter. There's also less of a chance of restructuring or reorganization and a RIF occurring, a reduction in force. If you have the money there, there's not a need to do that. All right, so Congress did a little back and forth and they finally reached a compromise on the numbers, on the budgets, what will agencies receive? Now these numbers, they impact agencies differently. Some people saw an increase, other organizations saw a decrease. So let's go through this and look at how these agencies are impacted because if we have an increase in funding, we could see more hiring later this year. So the first thing we're gonna look at are the decreases, starting with the Bureau of Federal Prisons. They have a 38% reduction for facilities and the salaries, they're gonna remain flat. BOP has been informed not to reduce any of their positions right now. And on usajobs.gov, we can see currently they have about 400 open job announcements. We also have some law enforcement cuts. This is spread out across a few agencies, such as the FBI with a 6% reduction. The ATF has a 7% cut. The only law enforcement agency right now that's currently set for an increase in funding is the DEA and they are planning on hiring another 2,000 officers. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, is set to decrease by 7%. Congress has stated that the EPA can keep their current workforce, but I wouldn't expect it to grow that much more. On usajobs.gov, there is a little over 100 job announcements for this agency. This is odd because the EPA recently was dealing with cuts. It was trying to recover from their agency losing thousands of employees. And there was a new bill passed where they were gonna be able to use that to hire more people. But now that looks like it could potentially be in jeopardy. Next, we have the National Science Foundation taking a 5% cut. This is a pretty small federal agency. You get on usajobs.gov, there's no more than a couple of dozen job announcements for the NSF. I think they have a little less than 2,000 total full-time employees that work for them. Then we have NASA taking a little bit of a reduction at a 2% cut. Now let's shift focus and look at some of the federal agencies that will be receiving an increase in their funding. First, we have the FAA, that's the Federal Aviation Administration. This agency, they need air traffic controllers and they need them real bad. They're trying to hire 1,800 air traffic controllers. So they're seeing a 5% increase across the board. Now, they've been wanting air traffic controllers for a while. They haven't been able to receive it. The campaign continues. Then we have the VA. They have an increased funding, two parts. We have a 15% and a 17%. The first area is veteran mental health care, and the second is homeless prevention. So this is gonna actually create more jobs to address issues that veterans are experiencing. I've always been a pretty big proponent of the Veteran Affairs. It's really a huge agency. You have thousands of jobs in there. You can use the internal hire path once you're inside and you can jump around. You can go to the VBA, VHA. Maybe you wanna to go to OIG, the OIT. There's just so much there where you can really develop yourself in your career. If you're looking for room at the top, they have that too. GS-15s, SES positions. They have more than other agencies. This is one of the top three biggest federal agencies in the government. And also as an added bonus, they have that political insulation it doesn't matter if the presidential administration leans more to the left with being Democrat or leaning more to the right being Republican. Most people can look at the veteran community and say, we need to help this community. We need to put resources and assist this community in being successful and making sure they have the appropriate health care. That's what it's all about. That's what the agency represents. It's what it's about. So you don't have to worry about massive layoffs or massive restructuring. So if you don't know where to start, I would look at the VA. And especially since they have a location in pretty much every state in this country, look at the VA and see what's there. Now this spending bill, along with another one that should be signed towards the end of the month, this should take us out to September 30th. This should take us out to the new fiscal year. And this is being considered a bipartisan bill because we had both Democrats and Republicans that were happy. They were happy for different reasons. Republicans stated that they're glad this bill did not include the pay raise that the president had issued an executive order on that 5.2% pay raise, this doesn't include money for that. 
which means agencies have to look internally and find that money so they can pay their employees that much. Speaking of pay raises, as I'm recording this right now, the president just proposed a 2% pay raise for next year. That's not very much. That's not what we've been seeing lately. That's not the trend. Two, last two or three years, we've been seeing 4% or higher. That's not what's going to happen in 2025. Then we have the Democrats that are happy with this bill because they were able to prevent larger cuts that Republicans wanted to impose. And they had their priorities met. Priorities being air traffic controllers, mental health professionals at the VA. So everyone is celebrating. This is great. This is gonna help a lot of people that are currently stuck in the federal hiring process. I hear calls and I read emails almost on a daily basis of people saying they're stuck. They haven't been able to receive their final job offer. They've received their tentative job offer weeks ago, but nothing's happening. How long does it take? Why is the security team dragging their heels? Budget concerns is a big reason on why it takes longer than it should. So with these two bills being pushed out, this should relieve some of that some of that congestion that we've been seeing in the hiring process. The second bill really is more focused on the Department of Homeland Security. That's going to be very interesting in itself since you've you've been hearing about all the issues at the border. Should we be hiring more immigration officers or border protection officers or not? Should it be a policy issue? These are the debates, these are the arguments and discussions that are going on in Congress. What is the result of that? What is the compromise? That will directly impact the jobs that are in DHS. We're going to have to wait to see how that bill is worded. Overall, the top line spending is coming in at $1.66 trillion. With this being a presidential election year, there's a lot of mixed emotions. There's a lot of fear out there. People are thinking that if a Republican gets into office, they're going to cut dramatically all government jobs. They think this because it's been said. It's been said on the campaign trail over and over again. Do I think a drastic cut is coming? I do not think so. I think rhetoric is one thing. But when you look at federal government jobs, 10 years plus, you will see that it stays consistent at around 2 million federal employees. Throughout those years, the population of our country has been growing. Despite what you hear about the birth rate, it has still steadily been growing. Part of it's because of immigration. And... Even though the country has grown by millions, our federal employee rate has stayed the same. There are functions that are required in almost every single agency that need to be done in order to support and serve a large population. This is one of the reasons why I think you will continue to hear about drastic government cuts, but in reality, in practice, I don't think it's feasible and I don't think it's coming. If you're interested in a federal government job or maybe your next government job, you should know that you really only need three skills. If you have these three skills, you can attain the government job that you want. If you're missing one of these things, and most people are missing at least one, you're gonna have some difficulties. If you're interested in learning about that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.